What's good, what's good, fam? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Welcome to another little segment we dropping where I'm just comparing companies for y'all, helping y'all do a little homework. So many competitive companies in this game. And we want to just be able to sort out who's who. Because what I'm tired of people doing is I'm tired of us getting caught up in the name without doing the research and understand it. So I know a lot of people have a hard time with doing the in-depth research, so I won't knock some things out the park for you. But listen, before we get in deep, I want you to like this, subscribe, leave a comment, and share it to somebody who you know won't learn a game. Also, listen, we do a show every Tuesday called Trapping Tuesdays on the Wall Street Looks Like Us Now Network. Many of y'all over here on the Wall Street Trapper page, I definitely want to get y'all over there so y'all can check Trapping Tuesdays out. Way, way, way more in depth, but also download it on all your podcast platforms, Trapping Tuesdays. Man, I'm telling y'all, we 43 episodes in right now, 44 episodes in right now. I promise y'all, it's a game changer. So do that for me. Like this, subscribe, but also go to the Wall Street Looks Like Us Not Network and check it out. I need to give you a body of work so you can understand. Let me go to Trap so he can teach me. Let me go to Trap so I can understand. The reason why we can't effectively dominate the market is because we don't truly understand what's going on in the market. And we don't understand what's going on in the market how can we function inside of the chaos? Let's go, man. Today we are in the pharmaceutical companies. And today we got two heavyweights. Today we got Johnson & Johnson and Eli Lilly. I'm talking about this heavyweight right here. We talking about height for height, length for length. Knockout for knockout. Let's see who could get the job done. Let's go, baby. All right, so out the gate, we're going to go look at, uh, we're going to look at market cap. So Johnson & Johnson is a $411 billion company. Now, we understand that market cap is stock price times outstanding shares, right? So Eli Lilly is a $415 billion company. Now, these, this has happened over the last few years. Eli Lilly has been just doing a lot of research, a lot of... Yo, Eli Lilly is, is, is dangerous here. So, of course, we're going to just say that Eli Lilly is the bigger company. Not by much, by what? $4 billion, but it is what it is. We'll get them that. Boom. Revenue. Now... Johnson & Johnson brings in $94 billion in revenue. Eli Lilly brings in $28 billion in revenue. That's a huge discrepancy. So we'll get that to this. We'll get that to them. But here's what we got to realize, too. Johnson & Johnson has so many different companies within there, and they also just separated those three companies. So what they're talking about separating, I don't know if they actually did it yet, but they are breaking that down. So that's going to be something where they don't have a store part, a pharmaceutical part, and something else. I forgot what the other one is, so they're going to do that. But also, we got to remember that revenue doesn't mean cash. Revenue means all the money coming in, but we got to look at them profits at the bottom. That's what we're going to look at, so that's important. So we'll get us to them. Now, the dividend yield. Johnson & Johnson pays a 2.84% dividend yield. Eli Lilly pays a 0.93. The difference is Johnson & Johnson doesn't really have a lot of growth, but they do have a lot of shelf space. You know, they make up some of your bigger brands that's in the world. You know, you go to the brand, you go to the store, Johnson & Johnson is dominating the over-the-counter the band, that whole Noxzema, the baby powder, the baby oil, the shampoo, Johnson Johnson dominating that. But on the other side, Eli, but they do have a pharmaceutical company as well. They do, they, they are one of the big farms in the game. But Eli, literally, they got weight loss medicine, Alzheimer. They just got a non uh, addictive opioid they dropping. So, but, of course, dividend play will be for them. Now, here's what we love. Here's some of the meat and potatoes that we love. This right here, ROIC, return on invested capital. This is key, y'all. This is critical, y'all. This is critical. Why is this critical? Because this tells us for every dollar invested, 
Johnson & Johnson gets $15.41 back. So for every dollar that they go invest, they bring back $15.41. And spend it back and get it right back. Spend that check and get it right back. So $15.41. Now, Eli Lilly has an 18.61% ROI. That means for every $1 that they put out there, invested, they bring it back $18. That's a good sign of management. We like that. So we're going to get this one. Two, Eli Lilly. What's good, Trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Right now, I want to invite you to an amazing experience full of value. That is my community, Trappers Anonymous. It's 100% the greatest fundamental investing community on the market. Listen, your portfolio should be a masterpiece. And the only way we get you there is if we help you to learn how to invest with confidence. Now listen, I get it. Like you don't know a lot about stocks or maybe you've heard people say how much money they lost in stocks, but I can guarantee you one, because they weren't in the community and two, they lacked the information. Our goal in Travis Anonymous is to help you, really to hold your hand on the journey to becoming a confident investor, learning how to navigate through the different events that the stock market goes through to take you from panic to encouragement. There's no better time than now. This is an opportunity only for those who are willing to be on the journey. So listen, man, click the link below. Come join me in Travis Anonymous, man. I will see you in one of our many classes, whether it's Moat Monday, whether it's the two hour class we do on Sunday or whether it's just a book club, everything is geared toward making you a better investor so you can triple your network and turn your last name to an asset. It's your boy Wall Street Trapper. See you in the trap. Now, PE ratio, price to earnings, that means what you're paying for $1 of the company's profit. Price to earnings. What is the price you're paying for what they are earning? So this is, this is extreme right here because you want to know the higher the P-E ratio, the more expensive it looks, right? One of the things you got to do, let me put this in my head, to break down P-E ratios in relative. Boom, that's a, another piece of content. All right, so one of the things you want to pay attention to, so now, for Johnson & Johnson, you're paying $33 for one price, one dollar of their earnings, $33. For Eli Lilly, you're paying $70. Now, let me tell you something. We can also look at the dividend for that. So the re one of the reasons why this is cheaper, too, is because they pay a dividend. Because they pay the dividend, that is actually a, one of the reasons why it's going to be cheap. Dividend companies tend to not have, bigger dividend companies tend to not have as high a P-E ratio. And the reason why, because John, Eli Lilly saying, yo, we not getting y'all no money. Yo, we putting all our money back so we can keep making this dope. I, I hate to say it like that. We, gonna put, we keeping the money so we can keep making this dope. You dig? All right, so we will say that. Ooh, this a dog fight right here, dog. Ooh. Okay, now let's look at a body of work right here. So y'all know, I like to look at the one year, the three year, the five year. Let me go back. I like to look at year to date, which is meaning the first day of the market, January, January 1, 2, 3, whatever that first, well, January 3, 4, 5, whatever that is. And then the date, whatever we had now, that's year to date. So I like to look at year to date. I like to look at the one year, which is year over year. I like to look at the three year, the five year, the 10 year, just to give a whole body. Right? So we go to look at a body of work. In five years, Johnson & Johnson has only gave us a 24% return. 24%. In the same five years, Eli Lilly has given us a 430% return. Oh, my God. Woo! Now, look, that's telling us, one, Eli, I told y'all, it's been the last couple years that Eli just passed them up. This ain't been like this. So, this happened. We like this. Return on invested capital. We like this. And this tells us that they're giving us our money. So that's telling us the management team is investing money good. And it's telling us that the stock market is rewarding that. Come on now. Come on now. Ooh. So look, we got Johnson & Johnson with the bigger revenue. We got Johnson & Johnson with the bigger dividend. Johnson & Johnson with the low P ratio. That's okay. We got Eli Lilly with the bigger market cap. We got Eli Lilly with the bigger 
return on invested capital, and we got Eli Lilly with a better five-year return. This the money talk right here. This the money talk right here. All right. All right, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Man, like this below. Tell me in the chat what you like about these. Yeah, I told y'all we going to got it up. All right, so now we're going to get into profit margins. Now, this is important. Let's talk about why this is important. Let's talk about why this is important. Let's go right here. So let's say you got a small company. Let me just clear this up so y'all can see this. I, I'm always getting the same one so y'all can always see it. You know, just for, I got my new people in, right? So let's say you got a small company. Small company brings in $500. That $500 may be a 60% profit margin. Let's say you got a big company. Big company brings in $1,000, but that may only be a 20% profit margins. The $1,000 look like it's more than a 500, but based on the profit margins and the percentages, you see that th this company would be the better investment. Does that make sense? Because the profit margins are higher, right? So always, 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 always look for companies with higher return on invested capitals, higher profit margins, and higher returns. I'm putting that out there for y'all, and I'm going to give y'all another one at the end, higher free cash flow. All right, so... The difference with this is we got two companies that are basically the same. Basically the same. Remember, if we go here, we see that those market cap, these are mega, these are what you call mega cap. Anything over 100 billion, 200 billion is mega cap. Large cap is 200 billion. Anything over that is mega cap. So we're in a mega cap. They, this is what you call big, big pharma. Big, big, dope dealers. Big, dope dealers. You hear me? All right. Johnson & Johnson has a 13.32% profit margin. Eli Lilly has a 20%, 20.54% profit margin. So, look. That means they're not paying a dividend, but we're getting it back in return. This is big. All right, now, Johnson & Johnson does have $14 billion in cash. $14 billion in cash and cash equivalents. Eli Lilly only has $2 billion in cash. All right, so you got to ask yourself now, how are they running through that money? What are they doing? So they're probably spending a lot of money on um, research and development, which, Eli, which Johnson & Johnson is too, but, you know, we can't. That's a big discrepancy right there. I'm not going to lie. That's a huge discrepancy. But look at this. So we'll get it to them. We'll, ooh, this is a battle, y'all. They battle. Ooh, they battling it. But I think that Eli Lilly got more of the power shots. I think they battling, but I think Eli Lilly got more power shots, man. I think they got more power shots. All right. So let's go a little further. All right. Johnson & Johnson has $26 billion in debt. Okay, long-term debt. Eli Lilly got 14. <laughs> Bigger company, lesser debt. More cash, less cash, more debt. This a lot. This eight bill. Yo, Eli Lilly is punching them down in all the pot. Like we looking at a fight. They got the jabs and then they got the power shots. I think Eli Lilly got the bigger power shots, y'all. All right, now let's get into the free cash flow. So, this is big. Johnson & Johnson has 18 billion, 19 billion, 20 billion, 19 billion, 17 billion. So, they definitely hold in more free cash flow, right? Eli Lilly got 4 billion, 3 billion, 5 billion, 5 billion, 2 billion. So, I'm not going to lie. We got to give that Got to give it to Johnson & Johnson. You got to give it to Johnson & Johnson. And then I just did a research. I like to see who had the most strength when it comes to cash. I did this wrong. Let me, let me fix that. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. All right. All right. Johnson & Johnson had a six. When it comes to financial strength, Eli Lilly had a seven. When it comes to financial strength. And so when it comes to the heavy, what really helped Eli, what really helped Johnson & Johnson was the free cash flow. 
But in all the other power numbers, when it comes to the debt, they got lesser debt. They got better profit margins, better return in five years, better return on invested capital. They're not paying a big dividend, so they're putting the money back into the business. Whoo, this was a battle, y'all. This was a battle, man. Tell me what you like in the comments, who you like better. I'm not going to say who I like better. You got to say who you like better, right? So Eli Lilly, Johnson & Johnson, two of the big pharmaceutical companies, the big dogs, Definitely tell me what you think about it, man. Listen, man, it's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Let me know how you like this uh, type of content. Like it, subscribe it, hit the bell. Uh, tell me what you like in the chat, but make sure you go follow the Wall Street Looks Like Us and our network and check out Trapping Tuesday, man. I'll see y'all next time. Salute.